It is Monday, April 8th. I'm Adam Walsh, and this is The Signal. And it's eclipse day, and we're in the path of totality. That's right, The Signal is in Gander for the eclipse. And for today's show, we are coming to you live from Gander Collegiate. Go Concords! <laughs> Woo! All right, it, uh, is it still lunchtime here? It is lunchtime, right? Yep, yep, tail end of lunch. What, what, when's, what time's lunch over? Uh, 12, 12. There? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I never know. We do school shows, and it's different right. depending on the school. All and, weird times. Yeah, yeah. You know, I never really take a lunch. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, this is Jason Power. I'm talking to physics teacher at Gannett Collegiate. Hello. How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. What? Like, uh, this is a big yeah. deal. This is a big day. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's been cloudy all morning, but uh, it kind of looks like it's starting to get a little brighter out there. So Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for sure, yeah. So what does one do as a physics teacher when there's like one of these like, you know, moments like today with an eclipse coming and you're like, whoa, we're in the path of totality. And if it, uh, regardless, it's going to get dark and there's, I guess, tons to right. talk about. So what have you been doing? Uh, well, I mean, I heard about this about a year ago last summer and I was like, wow, like, this is really great opportunity for us to do something. And then about a week later, I heard about this project that we're taking part in. Uh, I've got a few of my physics students that are uh, essentially just taking photos of the eclipse during like the partial phase and the totality phase. And uh, it's all going towards this sort of big international research project between like Canada and the US and Mexico. So that's yeah. really neat. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's great. I, like I remember uh, doing stuff in science in high school, and nothing went towards my international anything. No. So I mean, to be, <laughs> but like to be involved in that, yeah. it, it, it makes it feel more than like you're studying something. You're you're actually part of it. Like it's real. It's something that you are a, yeah. like a big part of for like just understanding what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a really great opportunity that we've been presented with here. It's really cool. Grab. Uh, I know students. We got a couple students around. Uh, who do we got? We got one just over there. Uh, that will cycle through. We've got a right. few students today. And so, folks, the way the show is going to work, it's like we've got some teachers, some students. Well, we've got an astrophysicist uh, from Memorial University, some of uh, his students. I think the mayor of Gander is supposed to pop by. But all of this is really like looking through a lens of a, you know, a safety lens uh, that's approved for the eclipse <laughs> and, and talking about science and the excitement around it. So who do we have? Who's the your grade 12 student? All right. Well, we've got uh, Evan Ralph here, one of my grade 12 students. Excellent. All right. Step on up to the mic. Hi, so I'm Evan Ralph. I'm a grade 12 student here at GC, and uh, I'm a part of the DEB initiative group here. So what we do is we take our telescope outside, set it up, take pictures, takes about a couple hours, and we've been practicing now for a couple months, since February or so, getting out, doing our practices on the moon, on the sun, but now today is finally the big day, so we're all excited. We're finally here. It's go time. Yes, finally, man. Yeah. We've waited so long. Do you, so I'm assuming you like physics and oh, studying yeah. the, uh, astronomy. Yeah, so, well, my goal is to become an engineer. So that's where the physics comes in. Yeah. But I did, at one point, aspire to be an astronomer. I love watching the space movies, you know, like Interstellar, The Martian, you know, stuff like that. But I'm really interested by space, looking up at the stars. So it's cool to actually say that you observed the sun and took pictures of it during an eclipse. What do you think about all of the... I mean, there's been a lot of coverage around this, right? There's a lot of folks talking about from wherever you look today, it's New York Times, CNN, BBC, everyone, like everyone is talking about this here today. So to be part of an international project and to be in Gander when we're, and in, you know, New, like beyond the Newfoundland for this thing to go over, to be here with your role in it. It's so cool to me because this kind of event only happens once in a lifetime for most people. Some people don't even get to see it in their lives. And to look back on our pictures that we take and say that that was us, we took that picture, it's really cool just to be able to say that that was me. I was part of such a rare event. These things only happened. The last one was in 1979, and the next one's not for another 20 years. So it's cool to say that I was here. Yeah, years from now, right? It'll be like, oh, I remember exactly what I was that doing. That was then. me, right? right? That yeah. was us there, right? And as you remember who was with you, what you're doing, and, and all of that. All right, we're going to, I'm going to grab uh, uh, a professor to come over and talk now, and then we're going to talk to another student now just in a few minutes. But uh, come on over. 
Professor Healy Nielsen. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you doing today? Good. So, well, give folks the, the 411 on who you are. They probably would have seen you or heard you because, well, you're on my show by phone a couple weeks ago, but tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, my name is Hilding Nielsen. I'm a professor in the Department of Physics and Physical Oceanography at Memorial University of Newfoundland and Labrador, and I really need to find a way to abbreviate that. <laughs> I'm an astronomer, who, and I have a huge interest in the solar eclipse, the science of stars, cosmology, and SETI, and all that fun stuff. Like, so today, I mean, to pardon the sports metaphor, but I mean, this is like a, like it's bigger than a Super Bowl type of a thing when it comes to what you're doing, right? Like it's a big, like how big of a deal is this for you today from where we are right now? Super Bowl metaphor is pretty good. To me, it's Christmas. <laughs> I've been like waiting for weeks for this. Yesterday was Christmas Eve, and I'm just waiting to open the presents at around five o'clock. All right, Professor Nielsen, give me some science on this. What can we expect? Like, what? Like, tell us if if I didn't know anything about eclipses, which is like, you know, not. I mean, that is fairly accurate, anyways. Just tell me uh, a little bit that I should be aware of for today. Well, today, starting around 3:30 or so, the moon is going to start passing in front of the sun, and you're going to see a little sliver of darkness. Of course, you shouldn't ever stare at the sun. Eclipse or no eclipse. Regardless, clips. yeah. Regardless. So if you put your eclipse glass on, you'll see the, the moon starting to cover the, sh the sun, creating a shadow, and it's going to keep passing in front until it engulfs the entire sun. We'll call that totality. We'll have totality here in Gander, be around the southwest coast and up through central, uh, out to Bonavista. And during totality, the sky will get dark. If it clears off, we may see stars and Jupiter and Venus. And for about a couple minutes after the beginning of totality, the moon will start passing ahead again, and we'll go back to a partial. Th things will clear up and it'll move on. What are some uh, neat things around the eclipse that you're like looking for or thinking about? For me, is this is my first total solar eclipse. So for me, I'm I'm just kind of chilling and I want to enjoy this experience as much as possible. Everyone I know who are eclipse chasers, they tell me this is the transformative experience. So uh, I, I kind of want my hit of that. <laughs> and, but I'm also very interested in like thinking about how our solar system works. Just how the sheer fact that our moon and the sun appear to be about the same size in the sky, which is incredibly rare and just weirdly l lucky. Because there's you know, other terrestrial planets, all the other moons, uh, Mars, and uh, have very tiny moons. You know, other the gas giants have lots of moons, but they're not quite the right size or the right orbits. And so we're in this weird place where we can have a total solar eclipse. I'm just kind of want to sit and enjoy the glory of it. Yeah, the moon is you know photobombing the sun here today. Exactly. Right. You know? It's pretty neat. We're going to talk some more about some. Um, more of the science around this. I've got a bunch of other questions through the course of the hour. I know you've got some other students that we'll bring over now, I, I just any time now. But first, I'll bring in a, another high school student, and then we'll switch out with the university ones. It's an active scene here at Gander Collegiate here today. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. All right, give me a, introduce yourself. I'm Bridget O'Brien. I'm a grade 12 student here at Gander Collegiate, and I'm a part of the DEV initiative. Excellent. Well, nice to meet you. Good to meet you, too. Uh, how are you feeling about today? I'm very excited. Yeah? Why? Very excited. Um, I've always been a really sciencey minded type of person, and physics is one thing that I absolutely adore. I'm starting studying it in the fall, and I don't usually get a lot of chances to experience like the real life applications of the stuff we learn in class. But with this solar eclipse, this once in a lifetime opportunity, I finally get to see some of it in action. So what are some of the things you've been reading about in the lead up to this? Um, well, we've done, we're hopefully going to get some good uh, information for solar flares because we don't usually get a lot of information on that. It's really hard to observe the sun, but with something covering the sun, it's going to be a lot easier to see what's going on in the atmosphere, what's going on outside of it. Yeah. It's stuff we don't really know about yet. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's really neat, right? Just uh, it, for me, too, like the prep for today and just kind of looking at, you know, we're in school when there's announcements going on, okay? Um, it makes the show feel really legit that we're out of the studio. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, the, the lead up to it, like the prep work, looking into everything uh, around it, some of the history about it, right? Like yeah, I was looking definitely. at, was it uh, Eclipse Island with, uh, you know, James Cook as he was like making maps and uh, yeah. at, at, like in 1766, exactly. like it's wild. It's, it's been around for so long, but we really, we don't get to observe it very often because it only happens what, once every, what, 79 years? What's the excitement been like then, too? Like, as you've seen it, for, whether it's with other students or your teachers or your family? Well, we've been we've been prepping for this every Tuesday after school since, like, September. One of the first days we all signed up for this, and we never actually felt like it was going to get here. We've been waiting and doing practices and setting up our telescope and tracking things in the sky for months, but we it never really felt like it was going to get here. 
Yeah, and now here's the day. Yeah, now here's the day. Okay, so here's the question though. If it's, I'm looking outside right now, still seeing cloud cover. I know yeah. we're on the cusp of possibly not, but possibly yes, and yeah. you know, we're, we're waiting to see. If there is cloud cover, or like, will you be disappointed? Are you going to be okay with that? I'll probably be a little disappointed. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. It'd be great to see it, but even just ha like being able to go through the motions and being able to understand like what we should see, what we are supposed to be seeing, then even the darkness that will come from just yeah, the moon, the moon covering it is going to be yeah. Regardless, cool. it's going to get dark at some yeah. point today. So well, at a specific point today, yeah. it's going to get dark. Right around was it five twelve? Five twelve. See, there you go. I think I just passed my test. Yep. Uh, thank you so much for this. I'm Adam Walsh. This is The Signal. We are in Gander for the Eclipse. Today's show is live from Gander Collegiate. As I said uh, earlier, go Concords. I've got Mayor Percy Farwell here. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for popping by. It's um, always nice to see the mayor come into the high school and look around. With well, all you know, I, I spent my time here. I'm, we're standing outside the principal's office. I spent some time in there, too. They still have your picture on the wall. Ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they'll take that down maybe eventually. But all right, so a place you spent a lot of time. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. There's a, a, a bit of buzz around Gander again. Uh, I don't know if you noticed. Yes, I, I did notice that. We're, we're generally a busy place. I mean, yeah. I just came off of a full week of the Provincial Drama Festival here. That's right. And yeah. uh, now we're rolling right into a little, little eclipse we've been planning for a while, apparently. Yeah, so you ordered that in, eh? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah. No, yeah. It's, so what... What types of things have been on the go in the lead up for the eclipse, and what, what have you been involved with? Well, for, fortunately, you know, we, we've we've had the collaboration and, and uh, partnership of of the you know Munns School of Physics and the Johnson Geo Center and uh, the Royal Astronomical Society and College of North Atlantic and so on. So we've managed to, to pull together a few soiree events to mm -hmm. mark uh, the uh, this you know rather interesting and fairly unique situation we're going to see here in the next few hours. Uh, so we had, you know, a couple of events in, in licensed establishments where people were talking about astrophysics, which, yeah. you know, sometimes that happens anyway, but the people talking about the astrophysics don't know, any, don't know what they're talking about. And yeah. uh, now we actually had people there that were scientists who, uh, who, uh, <laughs> who were actual astrophysicists. Yeah, exactly. And, so uh, it's like, instead of having me and you in, in yeah. a licensed establishment having a conversation, it's people actually, like you said, some of the experts. Yes. Yeah. So, so it, but I mean, you know, uh, seriously though, it's, it's been a great opportunity for, uh, for some learning to occur oh, around, yeah. around the event. And so it's quite a, quite a magical spectacle, right? And uh, so we had some, some a couple of events in, in local establishments where where there was presentations and discussions and displays and so on around around some of the physics and some of the science around this and uh, the Johnson Geo Center uh, uh, brought out their um, their inflatable planetarium that which was assembled in the College of North Atlantic uh, here for a couple of days and and a lot of kids got a chance to go through there and the programming was more directed towards uh, towards young people and uh, good learning experience for everybody you know so so there's the there's the spectacle of the, the phenomenon we're going to see, but then, you know, hopefully a lot of people that have uh, been in the area over the last few days have learned a lot about what it's all about too, right? So when you're mayor, there's lots of different things that you have to do and for conversations and it can come down to municipal planning and issues and people phoning about issues and then, but there's also like special events like this, like for you personally, kind of being mayor and seeing something like this come and all the, the learning and, and the, the interesting stuff around it. What's it like for you to kind of witness it and be part of some of it? It's great. It's the kind of community you want to be. We're, yeah. we're a pretty bustling, active community. We are a service center for a large geographic area, and we are a sort of a special events center for for a number of things, whether it's conferences or concerts or, in this case, solar eclipses. You know, we're not the only ones that are going to see this solar eclipse, obviously, but we are a good focal point for people to come, and uh, and hopefully, if the clouds clear off a little more than they have so far, I saw some blue sky on the way up here. By see, the there way. you go. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> saw a little blue sky, so hopefully that's uh, indication, but it's you know uh, we we kind of like being a community like that. We're a, we're a service center and a place where people can avail of things that aren't in their own communities, and we're more than you know uh, eager to welcome people to come and uh, enjoy things like this uh, here. So so it just uh, adds to the the vibe and the energy in the community and and these sorts of things we really look forward to. Mayor Percy Farwell, thanks so much for stopping in. I know you're a busy person. I appreciate you making time for coming on the show today. My pleasure, anytime. All right, sir. Thank you. All right, we'll bring Professor Hilton Nielsen back in. What? So you were at the soiree on Friday, right? Yes, sir. What was it like? How was it? 
I had a blast. I loved it. <laughs> so we came in. We uh, invited a couple guests, a colleague Dave Saunders from Parks Canada, uh, Gary Diamond from the Johnson Geo Center, and we had some of our students there. And we, you know, we talked about science, light pollution. Uh, you know, David uh, had a whole costume about to help explain artificial light at night. It was great. Yeah. Like, it was just a fantastic show and a great way to open up the soiree. Awesome. What? What types of questions, like what's the range of questions you get or that you've gotten like when it comes to like this and what's happening today? How often are eclipses? What happens if I stare at eclipses? Will the world end sometimes? But people are, I think, have a good sense of what an eclipse is and they're all just very curious about what's happening and why it's so special, particularly totality, because we had an annual eclipse not that long, only a few months ago, that went through across the western North America. Yeah. So why is this one so special, for, which is a question I think a lot of people have. What do you feel then about how special it is for, for what you do? For me, it's a bit of both, being at, having an eclipse at home, which is really great. Yeah. But also, you know, the totality mm -hmm. allows us to explore things like the corona of the sun. So, you know, we have the sun and out to a point like, that we see normally day to day. But beyond that, there's this whole weird plasma of material that you can't really see otherwise. But during an eclipse, it, it appears you see it, and that's hot plasma that you don't even really totally understand. There's a whole bunch of questions about that. So this is also a good chance to do science and learn more about our nearest star, the sun. It's just kind of wild, right? Because like, I, growing up studying some science in school, and like, I don't, there's a point in time, and this just shows how little I knew. But like, oh, we know an awful lot, and then like the more you get older, like we don't know much of anything, and there's so much more that we have no idea about. That's the fun of science. The more you know, <laughs> the less you understand. It's stressful. It's stressful. I'm I'm coping. <laughs> Therapy helps. <laughs> talk to me before we go to your students. Talk to me about the moon. How was the moon created? Ooh, that's a big that's a big question. So we are in a weird place. We have a giant, a big moon. Relative to other planets in our solar system, particularly the terrestrial planets like Mercury, Venus, and Mars, we have this moon that exists, and it's weird. So what happened about four and a half billion years ago when the Earth was really young, it was kind of this mash of like hot material that's kind of collapsing. And mining it was going around the sun minding its own business when this planetesimal the size of Mars hit it. It just you know basically T-boned the Earth and material got sh spun out of, from the Earth and eventually it coalesced to form something that we see today is the moon. Mm -hmm. So then it makes the moon, and then what, why is the moon important? Why do we care about the moon other than like looking about it and singing about it in poetry? Uh, yeah, poetry, is uh, poetry is important. Poetry is important. To be were werewolves is important. <laughs> but also, you know, the moon gives us tides. The moon is a geologic record of the Earth because a lot of the material, the material the moon is made of is the same as the Earth, so it helps us understand the Earth's geology. It's, we have moon quakes and seismic activity that allows us to understand the interior structure of the moon along with the Earth, so we get a better sense of the solar system. Mm. And you know, the moon, if you look at it closely, has a lot of cratering in it. Mm. So it's also helped protect us in the past from asteroids and comets. So you know, it's, we've been very lucky to have the moon. But most importantly, being in Newfoundland, we like the moon because of the tides. Mm. And having a day like today, the tides will be a little higher, be a little more exciting. And if we didn't have tides, who knows if we how would we even have life on Earth? Because the tides were so important for life to go from the ocean to land. So yeah, like if the moon were to disappear tomorrow, we've got some tide problems. We have some tide problems. No more werewolves. No more werewolves. It would be a very different world. Uh, you know, we'd have. There are a lot of animals that kind of hunt by moonlight, so the nocturnal animals would change because it would be a darker sky. Yeah. Their you know, guiding, uh, guidance would change, things like that. Cool. All right, I've got some more questions for you later, but let's uh, cycle through some of these uh, university students. Come on down. They're all looking at each other, pointing at each other. There's some rock, scissors, papers going on. So these are some of our fantastic memorial students. Uh, first up is Glena and Victor. Hey, come on up. Well, yeah, one, or, yeah, one or two at a time, doesn't matter. Perfect. All right, just be a little close to the mic. Perfect. All right, so tell Hello. me more who you are and what you're studying. Yeah, my name is Galena Sharon. I'm an undergraduate student at Memorial University. I'm in my final year doing a physics degree. Yeah. Why, why physics? Um, I, I always wanted to do astrophysics. I knew it's something I wanted to do, and I knew I had to do physics. Um, I came to MUN, and Dr. Nielsen just happened to be uh, arriving at MUN, kind of in my last couple years. So I got the opportunity to study under him. I'm currently doing my uh, honors thesis. Um, studying stars and that's kind of how I ended up here it's something I always knew yeah so then for you studying what you're studying what does today mean 
Uh, today means, uh, I'm not sure. I guess I'm going to find out in a couple <laughs> hours. Uh, it's, I've never seen a total solar eclipse before. Uh, once in a lifetime opportunity to see it in Newfoundland, I've heard. So um, I'm very excited. What do you want to do later on then, like once you get through your, your degree? Uh, graduate school, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to continue working in astrophysics. Uh, I want to hopefully one day work on telescopes, either space-based or ground-based telescopes, um, helping build them and uh, making it so that we can observe the sky. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think about all the excitement around this? Like when you look at, so, and by the way, when, like, when you're studying uh, physics or studying astrophysics, when you look at like media coverage, is it ever frustrating when, like, because it's not always, like sometimes it's kind of right, other times you're like, oh, that's not quite how that works. Like, what's it like for you? That can be the case. <laughs> it's not, it's not frustrating so much so as... Disappointing. <laughs> kind of, I suppose. I mean, I think we all have a bit of a duty to do some science communication. That's why I'm so passionate about it. Yeah. Um, you know, if I see a Facebook post that's talking about the solar eclipse saying, oh, don't look at it under any circumstances, you know, I think it's important to correct and make sure that everybody can enjoy it. Um, and make sure that we, you know, spread the knowledge that we have and that we can share. Mm -hmm. So what do you think then about, like, I guess, science literacy nowadays with folks? Uh, I think it's dangerous yeah. for a lot, mo the most part. I think, um, increasingly, especially with stuff like AI articles and um, just a lot of people being able to post a lot of stuff, uh, it's getting more and more prevalent and I think we have to be diligent in doing our part in correcting it. Oh, yeah, I mean, in the lead up to this, just I've seen a bunch of different things posted on Facebook, right? Yes, and sometimes it's yeah. kind of like, mm, well, there's no, this is, there's no attribution here, I don't know where this is from, it's saying a lot of Absolutely. different things Absolutely. and it just floats around and then it gets shared and then people mm -hmm. have a yeah so yeah. it's easy to see how much mis or disinformation oh can. absolutely it only takes one person with a lot of followers to spread this exponentially growing piece of misinformation you know? yeah it's so hard when the toothpaste is at the tube on those right yes no yeah. exactly exactly Excellent. thanks for this thank you very much uh, professor Nils, i want to bring you back in for a second if you if you don't mind sure what do you like as a as a professor, like on that misinformation disinformation side of things, for what like especially like if we're talking about the eclipse for today, mm -hmm. what do you think about kind of like when you look through whether it's, I don't even know if you're on Facebook, but no, actually you are because we're in the the, the uh, eclipse group together. But anyways, when you're on, if you see mis or disinformation, what do you think as a scientist around this? I think it's disappointing. I think it's understandable because as noted, you know, sources of information come from everywhere, right, wrong left, right, who knows what, where, what the source is. We have all these sources of information, but we have very, we've sort of lost our skills to sort of interrogate these issues and interrogate what, what's being said here. And, and then a lot of things is because we're not really talking about science or humanities, STEAM, STEM, all these things, very often enough anymore, I think people have lost a little bit of the ability to interrogate a lot of these issues. And unfortunately, there are people who benefit from this, this misinformation, which yeah. is unfortunate. Have you seen anything around the eclipse where you're like, no, that's not that's I've seen that the world's going to end. Okay. Which is probably not going to happen. I mean... I'm open now. No. Yeah. <laughs> if I put a lot of work into today. It would be great if it didn't. <laughs> um, you know, but I haven't seen too much more than that. Uh, the unfortunate reality, the biggest thing I've seen that's actually a problem is the prevalence of uh, fake glasses now. So there are a lot of eclipse glasses that are potentially fraudulent. Mm -hmm. So people should be very careful, particularly if they don't, if, if uh, they haven't heard yet, to test their glasses and make sure that they're safe. But not stare too, they have glasses, not stare too long in the, at the sun just in case. So yeah, so if safety wise, Right, so what, what's the check then for glasses? Like if, like, what is it supposed to say on them? Like just in Well, they should be ISO certified to stamp on, I always miss the number. Yeah, yeah. But even then, unfortunately, you know, there are fraudulent stamps out there. Yeah. So if you have a, as long as it's ISO certified, that's a good start, but you can test it using your uh, cell phone uh, uh, flashlight. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. That'll give you a, a basic idea whether it might be work. If you get a lot of light coming through, probably not a good sign. Yeah. If you put them on indoors or outside on a cloudy day and you see anything, probably not a good sign. Hmm. Yeah, so if you bought your glasses from a guy named Spider in an alley, use your cell phone with the light to check. Well, I probably wouldn't recommend Spider. He's not my <laughs> trusted distributor of glasses. No. <laughs> see, these are good points that we all have to work towards in order to understand science and safety for today. And, like, when you do have the proper glasses on, how long can we look at the sun for you? No, in principle, you probably should only look at it a few seconds at a time. Just yeah. look up, kind of enjoy the moment, look back down, give give your eyes a little break. Because we want to keep our eyesight as healthy as long as we can. Yeah, okay.
we've got another student coming through. Come on down. Hi, this is Victor. Hi. Hi, how you doing, Victor? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Tell me about yourself. Okay, well, my name is Victor. I'm also in my last semester of my physics degree. I study astrophysics under Dr. Nielsen, as well as biophysics under Dr. Yetheraj. Yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I guess kind of similar to what Galena was saying, I've always had a pretty big interest in science in general and learning a lot, right? I don't think I've encountered a type of physics really that I dislike and it's a bit of a trouble, like kind of a problem because, you know, I have a little bit of a, oh, I really want to do everything and I like everything and I yeah. can't really do that. But biophysics kind of lets me study things that are really, really small, uh, relevant to things like medicine and whatever, and astrophysics let me study really big things that I can, you know, look up in the sky and have that little wonder about, right? Yeah. So what then, what are some of your sky wonders as we go into today with everything that's oh. going on? Well, I've never seen an, a full eclipse before. I saw a little bit of a partial eclipse back in 2017. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for it. Uh, I've been hearing a lot. There's been a lot of great presenters over the weekend that have talked about the amazing experiences they've had looking at total solar eclipses. And, oh, it's gotten me very excited, and I hope it's not cloudy. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah we're all kind of... Looking up at like every so anytime someone says this on the show, yeah, I'm, so for everyone listening, we're getting collegiate and I'm facing away from the door. So anytime someone says sky, I turn around, and I look, I'm like, no, it's still kind of cloudy, but maybe a bit brighter. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. What out of the presentations you've heard, like what's kind of like piqued your interest over the last few days? Mm, I think the fact that we have a few like solar telescopes here that are going to be taking some really cool images, I'd love to see afterwards. Um, I love photography. I love space photography. I wish I had a good telescope to take things. Uh, pictures of that sort of stuff, but I don't, so I'll be kind of chasing after the people that do. Yeah. So when you were younger, then what was a moment in your life when you were just like, no, this is a path for me, this is what I want, oh. this is what's kind of the, the catalyst? Yeah, so I actually learned to read, reading little tiny books on all the different planets in the solar system. Oh, really? Yeah, and I think ever since then, it's just kind of been there, right? I, I've i loved it, I've loved learning more stuff. It's super cool, like, there's this stuff that we can only see by looking very, very far away, and. Yeah, that's just something I'm really, really passionate about. Yeah. All right, so you're learning to read with the little booklets for the solar system. What, yeah. which of the planets, like, what were you like? Oh, this one's really cool, and I want to know more about uh -huh. it. Because um, for me, it's always Jupiter, right? I was yeah, yeah. Jupiter's so cool. Yeah, for me, Saturn. I think it's a, that's the classic. It just looks really cool. Uh, the rings are nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and where do you stand on Pluto nowadays? Well, I don't stand. I stand on Earth. <laughs> um, uh, but no, I used to be. I, I used to be very, very, very mad. I think my parents told me I cried when they were like, "Oh, Pluto's not a planet anymore." But I mean, it's all good. It's though. not. I'm a scientist now. I understand why they did it. It's unfortunate, but it, you know, we got pictures of it now. New Horizons was pretty cool, and yeah. I was waiting for that for a really long time. And you know, it looks good. A little hard on it. It's nice. It's doing yeah. its own thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, labels don't matter. Yeah. Pluto's exactly. Still there, doing its thing. Yeah. Planet or not. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for, for sure. Chat. Yeah, of course. Thanks. I'm Adam Walsh, and this is The Signal. It's our Eclipse show. We're live uh, from Gander at Gander Collegiate today. I'll bring my main guest, uh, my de facto main guest back into this, uh, astrophysicist Hilding Nielsen from uh, Memorial University. Professor Nielsen, you gave a talk, a virtual talk uh, earlier today. What were we talking about? Yeah, so this morning, the, uh, the Atlantic Chairs for D Equity, Diversity and Inclusion at, for the National Science and Engineering Research Council organized a series of talks and lectures for schools and people from around Atlantic Canada about the eclipse. I chose to talk about the solar eclipse and how we use it to actually understand general relativity. You know, all that Einstein stuff and everything's relative. So Einstein developed this theory of general relativity a century ago, yeah. and he made predictions based on that, saying that light should bend around stars. Unfortunately, he predicted this for the, that if light coming from stars passed by the sun, that light would bend. The problem with that is the sun's in the way. Darn sun. Exactly. So, but we got lucky. We have a, a big moon that wants to see all the show all the time. And when the moon passes front, if you look at the stars, those stars will appear to have shifted their location from normal to, when you look at them normally. Hmm. And that is evidence of gravitational bending of light. That was proof of Einstein's theory of relativity, one of the first elements of that proof, and we have proof all the time today. And so I, I spoke about that, how solar eclipses help us understand that. It took a forward to say, and this is, leads us to things like black holes, things like gravitational waves, all this really extreme physics. And it all came a century ago when we were observing solar eclipses. I mean, that's wild. 
it kind of blows my mind. Yeah. But like it really though, like when you because you grow up obviously, right? Like talk hearing about Einstein. As you get older, you study a little bit about him. Some people study a lot more than others, but it's just this name that's present. The theory of relativity, everyone kind of knows about it. But then to think of like what was done a century ago and the fact that it's like, oh no, nope, the math works out. Exactly. You know, everyone has an image of Einstein. The hair. Sometimes it's sticking out the tongue. Maybe you had that poster in university. And everybody knows this idea and the theory of relativity about how science is, and gravity is all wobbly and how it's working out is amazing. And so that we use this to detect the existence of black holes orbiting each other and eventually merging. And that, those mergers coming together sends waves of co compression in space time. So it basically compresses space like an, uh, like an organ mm. and we can detect that. Now, when it reaches, by the time it reaches us, that compression is really small, so we don't notice it. It's smaller than the size of an atom. But if we can detect it, we see these merging black holes, and we see them from billions of light years away. What should people know about black holes, like in a short radio sense, as opposed to like a full podcast that we could do on, on black holes? <laughs> you could do, well, you could do a ton of podcasts on black holes, but the coolest thing about black holes is they are the densest objects we know of in the universe. They're so dense that they have a radius where light cannot escape, hence their name. But they inter interact with us all the time, whether they are the dead, the dead uh, bodies of, of massive stars, whether they're at the center of our galaxies, they're all around us. And they're, they're big, they're gravitationally awesome, and they're a huge part of our universe. When did you realize you wanted to do this? I wish I had that romantic story that all astronomers have. Like, I didn't look up in the sky and said, ooh. <laughs> I did say that a few times, but that wasn't what got me into the field. <laughs> I went to school for engineering, yeah. and I couldn't get in. Hmm. So I picked up an astronomy course, and opening up the textbook, everything was a question. What is dark matter? What is dark energy? How do stars die? What, what are neutrinos? Everything was a big question. It was like, it was a great mystery novel. Hmm. And it, was, it was like reading uh, every Agatha Christie book, and all at once, it's still not figuring out the who done it. Hmm. And that's what kind of drew me in. Hmm. And now as a, as a professor, so whether it's the students we're talking to today, the university crowd, or you talking to everyone from like grade eight on up uh, for the virtual bit today, when you're teaching and you see folks kind of, or to even for some of talking to me, like when you see folks understand a little bit more about some of these, the answers or, or a little bit more around these questions, what does that do for you? What does it do for you? Like, what, what, like, what is it like as a teacher to see people learn from your instruction? I love it. Like, some of the students I've worked with have been doing some amazing things. I have students who are from a past life on the mainland, who are in graduate school. They are working in, in data science. Students here are winning awards due for the research. I'm just so proud and amazed, mm -hmm. and realize that they're doing this in spite of me, probably because <laughs> I just talk a lot. <laughs> I mean, you're great to have as a radio guest, I must say. I do have the face for it. <laughs> Same with me. This is why we're both on radio today. All right, let's bring some more students over. Who's next in line? Come on down. Oh, this is student Matthew. Hey, Matthew. How are you doing? Well, good, thanks. How are you? Good, good. So what are you studying? Uh, I'm also a physics student in kind of the tail end of my, my degree as well. All right. So then why did you want to get into studying what you're studying? I've just, really, for the physics really was, I've always been just interested in physics. I grew up, like, my, both my parents have science degrees. My dad is a chemist. Mom has a bio, biochemistry degree. So I've just kind of been around that all my life. And I've just been a very curious kid. Mm -hmm. And so physics was kind of the best way I found to take that and just kind of looking at, you know, the world as it is and, and seeing what you can get out of that. So then, with physics and the world as it is yeah. and what you can get from it, what are some little bits that kind of stand out for you that might that others might be like, oh wow, that that kind of sits well with me too. Yeah, I've, I've always been interested in like again, I guess kind of as we're here, like space. It's been a yeah. big one always. Uh, and then I was, I was felt if you get to the kind of the other end of the scale when you get really small, I was always interested in like when I learned about it in high school, like quantum mechanics. I found that pretty interesting as well, just how the really tiny things work, and then obviously it's for the you know the space stuff, how the really big things work, and how different it gets from what we usually interact with. So. So then being here on this trip today, how are you feeling as we keep looking at the clouds? Nervous about the clouds, but very <laughs> excited to, uh, to hopefully if they, they get a bit of a break for us to, to see the, the eclipse. So then what's after today, what's next for you, you folks? Like, is it back, like you're back where? Back to exams. When are exams? This week, next week. Okay, so yeah. you're, I'm assuming you're ready? Getting there, <laughs> getting there. <laughs> Definitely had a few study sessions this weekend. Okay, yeah. yeah, study sessions, all right. Yeah. And then what happens after exams? Like what comes up? Uh, just taking a break until I'm into what's hopefully my last semester in the fall. 
Excellent. And then what, yeah. what do you want to do after? Uh, afterwards, the plan at the moment is to go into education at some point. Nice. Um, go for, you know, science teaching at a high school would be kind of the idea there. Cool. Um, but yeah. All right. Thanks for the chat. Thank you. All right. Who's next? We got a couple more. I love how I love how uh, you know Professor Nielsen brought a posse of students. When you all walked in, I was like, "Yes, this is great. I get to t ask tons of questions." First question: Who are you? My name is Amber. I'm currently doing my master's in chemistry at Mon. So I graduated with a bachelor's in chem biological in 2022. Okay, so why chemistry then? Um, so I guess I'm the odd man out of this group. <laughs> um, I've always been really fascinated with biology and its interface with chemistry and the fact that there are all these processes going on around us in our bodies, um, even just in the air as we speak, that we can't see but we can use different clues to understand exactly what's happening. It's all like a great big puzzle and so I really love that about it. So then as the resident chemist, how's it feeling hanging out with all the, the physics crowd? Like, are you doing okay? Is They're not picking on you? Fun. They're yeah? not picking on okay. me too much. Well, right. no more than usual um, but what I find really cool is one coming to science communication events like this it's really what got me into science so mm. I love being involved on the other side and um, I love listening to the physics talks because the methods that Dr. Hilding and his group used to study stars and to study gas clouds and all that stuff in space, I used to study molecules and atoms and things on the micro scale. So it's cool to see both ends of it. Excellent. All right. yeah. Thank you very much. Who else do we have? Are we? No, we're I'm getting some X's. I think we're, uh, we're running out of students here. Professor Nielsen, I'll bring you back into it if I could. All right. So then once we chat here today, once this is over, and we're, I mean, we're getting down there in the show. What's what's next for you folks now today? What else are you doing? Well, after this, I'm going to go uh, just to the next building over to the College of North Atlantic. We're setting up a couple telescopes. We're going to be giving away eclipse glasses, and we're going to I'm going to sit there until I see the eclipse come and go. This is cool, and I, yeah, I'm going to be there too because I might be doing some uh, newsnet hits for CBC. We'll also be because uh, there's a chance you'll be on here now with me as well tonight. So for folks, there's, I mean, there's lots and lots more to talk about and see. And for if you're in the area, like you said, wondering where to get glasses, I would totally trust you to give me eclipse glasses. And if you don't, I'll sell them to you for twenty bucks. <laughs> Any other thoughts on uh, just like what else should people know now for the last bit for today? Like any like parting thoughts or around stuff? Well, there's going to be a lot of people looking for eclipses today. You know, uh, chasing the weather, which is, Newfoundland is always a great hobby. Mm. And just keep an eye out. Be careful of traffic. Be patient. Just enjoy the crowd. Be with people. Mm. And you know, just love where we are in the solar system. What types of effect? Because some of the reading I was doing before, and people mentioned like it's weird for animals, and the people can have different reactions. Like, what are you expecting around that when it comes to the eclipse? For the most part, animals are okay. You know, cats don't care about anything. No, that's true. Very true. Dogs can get a little nervous, but that nervous could be because of the people they're with, yeah. or it could be a little bit of change in the weather. Uh, a lot of animals sort of react like it's turning into nighttime. Like if you're at a farm, you'll see the animals basically fall. Like it was like their schedule went early, and they go back to whether they're burn or whatever they're doing like at night, then come back out. Mm -hmm. Overall, not too bad, but you know, for dogs and that, I would recommend keeping. I would suggest keeping them inside just in case they're skittish and nervous around people. That's yeah. what I thought. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for uh, the science lessons and for introducing me to your great students. And uh, well, I'll be kicking around with you later on today with uh, those great classes. Yeah, thank you. All right. Professor Hilding Nielsen, there. Uh, let me bring uh, Jason Power, physics teacher, back in with a couple of students here again. All right, folks, uh -huh. hey, thanks again for letting me and the show and the team come here today. Uh, it's great. I appreciate it so much. What what do you all have to do now for setting up for the stuff you're doing outside? So the plan is now at about 3 o'clock, we're going to go out, get our telescope ready, set up, and just prepare for the eclipse. We're setting up early at 3, even though it starts just after 4, to give ourselves enough time just to make sure we're ready, because these things don't happen very often. we got to be ready, right? Yeah, one shot at this. <laughs> just one. This no, there's no pressure. Yes, no uh, pressure how, at all. How, how big is the telescope, by the way? I haven't even seen it yet. So. Uh, it's actually only a little telescope. Okay. I was surprised, but yep. it's got a lot of power. It zooms real far, and that's the problem. That's why we have to be careful with our uh, setting up because one little uh, push off, and we missed it completely because it zooms so far. The sun's so far away. 
All right, so a li little bit of stress around this. Tiny bit. As, a, as the, the resident teacher, how are you feeling about them all? You, they're good to go? You've got them all trained up every Tuesday so. since September, so. right? It's just been like, good. you know, practicing, <laughs> drilling it into them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been uh, mostly practicing since uh, since around Christmas, like January around that. So uh, we got real, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, yeah, meeting, you know, once a week or so to uh, get ready and get, you know, the whole procedure down. And uh, I think we're we're pretty good. I think we'll be well prepared for it. And what's the, like, so after, like, because with, with the, the whole project that you're part of, like, what's the after bits? Like, what, what's the follow through on this? And what, what will that mean? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think uh, Hilling mentioned there earlier that, uh, you know, when the moon is covering the sun completely, you'll see the corona yeah. of the sun, right, the LF plasma. So that's part of what we're doing, taking these pictures, is sort of to measure, like, the the motion of these essentially solar flares, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, and because we don't really completely understand how that works. Um, so, uh, you know, like I said, there's dozens of teams uh, across uh, like Atlantic Canada, uh, the US and Mexico that are doing basically the same thing that we're doing, uh, taking photos and we're, I guess we're all gonna combine those together into a big collage sort of thing mm. uh, to get an idea of how this, the corona and these solar flares and coronal mass ejections uh, operate and get a better picture. So I yeah, guess so way. as you do that, then I mean, there's lots to talk about in class after this, right? Yeah, for sure. Can we get a final word on it? If it's going to be cloudy or not, what are we thinking? I really hope it's not going to be cloudy. <laughs> Is this, I'm not looking outside. Is there any sun peeking through there now? Can, sure. Sure? <laughs> that didn't sound <laughs> confident. All right. A tiny bit. <laughs> just, 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 just a little, little. bit. Yeah. All right. Guys, thanks so much. Thanks for having Thank us. You. All right, everyone. We're wrapping up our, our show here at Canter Collegiate, our special eclipse-themed uh, show. So uh, coverage isn't in there, like I was saying, on the go next in the radio line for CBC. Great stuff on tap. There's, of course, here and now this evening, cbc.ca slash NL has the latest as well. And there's a CBC News special, The Eclipse in Canada, on the network, CBC TV, Gem Streaming. Wherever CBC is available, I'm pretty sure this thing's available. So do tune into that. Coming up tomorrow, we're still in Gander, live from the International Airport Lounge. We're looking at aviation history from years ago all the way to the present, so don't miss that. Taking us out, the Water Boys, the Hole of the Moon. Thanks for listening.